right, the Beavis and Butthead soundtrack, it sounds like. Anyways, <laughs> welcome to another episode of On the D-Lo, and uh, hello, Steve. Hello, Steven. David DiLorenzo. What do you prefer, Steve or Steven? Well, it's odd, because men generally call me Steve, or growing up it was Krause. Yeah. And then there is a very small, select few on a hand that call me Steven, which you are one of them, so... I accept that if you want to call me Stephen, it's perfectly <laughs> fine. I don't know if I call you anything because I see you all the time, and I just get big bear hugs. And when you come behind me and massage me, it's the best. Oh gosh, can we get, can we just delete that man, part of it? Manly hands. <laughs> no, we can't. But I do. I do want to talk about mint green tea. What is going on with that? Are there really that many people that love it? There is, and the data shows it, proves it. I just okay. So can we make a compromise? Can we have pressed tea, mint green, and then maybe a third? canister with black yeah no that's not gonna happen uh, yeah just not in the cards yeah i mean if my insurance premiums were lower i could probably afford to get another canister of it out there but right now it's really it's tough it's struggling if you'd stop wrecking cars and blowing shit up we <laughs> might not have a problem <laughs> exactly <laughs> all right well let, let's get into who uh who steven really is and, and what's going on with him so uh, let, wh where are you from originally i uh, grew up in columbus ohio okay uh, i went to school and lived in chicago until 2004, then I moved out here. Okay. And then when did when did the fruition of, uh, well, let's just say, what did you do when you first got out here as far as work? Um, so to go back in the early 90s after school, I was in hospitality, um, worked at bars for Let Us Entertain You, and then realized that I was putting in entirely too many hours and making a quarter of the amount of money that my friends were. So I got into, tele, I got into telecommunication sales. Yeah. And that's where I became really successful. And I always think that, you know, as a salesperson, who can become successful, I feel like they could also probably run their own business because that's essentially what they're doing. And so when I moved out here to be with my now wife, Tram Mai, uh, that was 2004, and I spent three years with Cox Communications and then decided I wanted to do my own thing. So you and your wife met in Chicago? We did. Oh. So she, she left. Uh, her first real gig was in Florida. She left California, went to Florida. Okay. Then she got her first um, desk job as an anchor in Columbus, Ohio. She became friends with somebody I went to high school with, and I was still friends with that girl from high school, and they showed up to my place one weekend in Chicago, all planned, of course. Yeah. And um, apparently she found interest in me. I don't know why. <laughs> and uh, yes, I, I've heard all the jokes. You've outkicked your coverage, Steve, the whole nine yards. Oh, same here. But um, yeah, we did the long distance thing for a few years, and then, then I, I made the leap to come out here. And then when you came out here, was was press on your mind as far as, like, creating no, a brand? Not, not at all. Yeah. Not even close. I think in the back of my mind, I always had probably somewhat of an entrepreneurial spirit, and that probably came from being successful in sales. I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And then one day it kind of popped in my head that I wanted a Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh. That was the, that was the goal. And so... Uh, did my due diligence, had several meetings with them, and then the final one was, or the final straw that broke the camel's back was, I needed 1.3 million to get this thing started. And I just didn't have that sitting around. So <laughs> the next night, my wife is like, you know what we should do? We should just do a coffee shop. I'm like, a coffee shop? She's like, well, we're always looking for coffee. And when I was at UCLA, that's all I ever did was go to coffee shops and yeah. do all my homework there. So it would be fun to do a coffee shop. Holy so, crap. And the first one was up at High Street. It was. It was at High Street. I spent a year doing a business plan. I went to Breeze to school. I went to coffee school. I went to some <laughs> trade shows. And um, and then the evolution of Press Coffee came to fruition on High Street in 2008. Yeah. Okay. And then th this whole time, I mean, you're able to, to, I mean, your wife is working, right? Correct. And so you're able to kind of do all this and, and put the business together. Yeah. I did most of it while I was still working until August of 2008. And then I finally, my boss knew it was coming. I yeah. said, listen. This is my last month. And he goes, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right. He's like, well, I wish you the very best. And, you know, it was it was definitely a leap of faith, but uh, I had a really good partner. Does that know? boss still know who you are today? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we still keep so, in touch. So, okay. So he, yeah. he can go to press now and enjoy yeah, absolutely. it. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll see how that works out for you. And here yeah. you are later. <laughs> Quite a few people. I, I still see some of them or talk to them once in a while. And so. Oh, my goodness. And how, and, and you have two, uh, two kids, twins, Zachary and Zoe, right? Correct. And how old are they now? They're nine. Fourth nine. grade. Okay. 
So they've been a part of this journey as well. Yeah, since 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a ride to say the least. And it's a lot. I mean, obviously being an entrepreneur, you know, business owner, I mean, I know you have two great partners. Now, you're uh, – your partners, Alex, was he originally with you? Yeah, Alex, well, not originally. He came on and started working with me as a barista in 2010. Yeah. Okay. And um, Alex came out of Georgetown. He's native here, um, an exceptional athlete. Um, but even, Fast. Yeah, fast and, and extremely smart. Yeah. Uh, hardworking. And he had asked, like, Do, can I move up? Is there a position? I'm saying, no, not right now. Good for him. This is, I just opened Scottsdale Quarter. Right. And uh, a month later, the GM said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave. And I'm like, Oh man, that stinks! And then in the back of my head, I'm like, Oh, I know who I can call. And I called Alex. I yeah. said, Hey, my GM position just opened. You want? He's like, Yeah. When can I start? I said, Tomorrow. Terrific. And as you know, because you've known Alex for a long time now, yeah. he is uh, he's second to none. It's amazing. Really second to none. Yeah. And uh, I've loved watching his journey grow as a as an adult. Not that he was too young, but right. you know, he's still in his middle 30s. But you know. I look up to him in a lot of different ways. He's just a, a great person. He's very level-headed. Yes. Yeah, and together. Yes. And I don't know if that kid needs coffee because he's already fast. Like yeah. you yeah. know, and he's had yeah. what two kids, right? He's got two kids now. Yeah. So you've watched that. Yeah. I mean, to watch your partners grow their family and yeah, do it, that's Elliot be amazing. and Sloan, and then of course my my other partner that that came on the business, Jason, in yeah. two thousand and um, late two thousand fifteen. Okay. And uh, since that time, he's also had Chloe and, and Quinn. Right. And he's he's behind us. This a little bit. Like, I'm in the I'm in the lead in the race with the kids and their growth. But you're the oldest, uh, though, right? Uh, out of all of, of them, the yeah. three of them, yeah. I'm the old guy. Yeah. 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 I'm the old guy. And Jason's got an interesting past. I mean, how I, he was in the NFL, if people don't know. And I mean, like, how how far after his NFL career did he get into doing restaurants or finding you? Well, I think that um, from what I've learned from Jason is he al always had an entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. He was doing things in college. He did things during his NFL career. Smart. Um, he just he's he is he's a different individual to say the least, and he knows what he wants. Yeah. Um, he's got a horrible case of OCD. <laughs> um, that's why we're and friends. <laughs> it, and that's where he and I clash quite a bit. Yeah. But, you know, his ability to see things and observe and and digest that and then come back with some responses is really impressive. And without Alex and without Jason, Press wouldn't be where it's at today. So uh, no. It's, it's been pretty spectacular to see. And, and we've had some bumps in the roads, but, you know, we, we – we really digest everything we take on, and, and we make sure that those decisions are the right ones. And uh, I, I'd say there's probably a half dozen decisions that I would have made that Jason has pulled me off the ledge and said, mm -hmm. no, it's a bad idea. So it's been great. Yeah, you guys are like a, a three-headed monster in a good way where you just really kind of help each other with all your different unique abilities. And yeah. that's, that's amazing. And, and a lot of times you don't see that because sometimes three-headed monsters can, you know, be very much at each other. And you're not that at all. You guys all get along great. Yeah, we, we hit that from a lot of people for a while. Yeah. Um, we couldn't figure out. I always, couldn't, I always knew what lane I was in. Um, and I knew what Lane Alex was in, but we, we kind of overlapped when it came to the operational side, uh, the physicality of doing this, that, or the other. And then the, the Jason came in, and, you know, he, was, he wasn't just an investor. He was, he was helping grow the business. And I didn't, I didn't believe he knew enough of the background of specialty coffee and the passion yeah. he needed to be in it. And so there was a lot of butting of heads for a while there. But I would say over the last four years, I mean, we all know our lanes really well now. Yeah. And I know when it's like... Jason, you need to spearhead this. Alex, this. Yeah. You know, and, and he and I will have an idea, and then we're like, Alex, does this work? You know, it's just, it, it's it's a great, great team right now. We're you guys spend very any, lucky. Do you spend any personal time together? Or do you guys just work yeah, so much? Yeah, we have some together? times together. Yeah. Uh, we, we love to celebrate the wins. Yeah. Um, we had one recently that, that we celebrated, and we actually got all the families together. It was a lot of fun. And, yeah, I, I, you know, we all just live in busy worlds with them having younger kids. Yeah. It's not as easy Different for me. I can just <laughs> grab Zach and say, oh, yeah, you were going out to dinner. Let's go. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, we definitely do. Definitely that's, spend some time. I mean, those are the people I'm around all the time. Right. And it's your family. It's just really. natural. Yeah. Yep. That's really cool. So besides your wife telling you, hey, you know, I always would get coffee and let's do a coffee place. Did you did you ever think or ever have a passion for coffee? Did you even like coffee before you got in this? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You did. Okay. Uh, not at the level that I did when I opened press. Right. Uh, I my eyes were opened up to what really truly specialty coffee was but I was always in search of like a good coffee right and um, I was on a podcast last year and, and the, the ladies 
caught me off guard with the question. She goes, when did you have your first best cup of coffee? And I'm like, oh, gosh, I don't know if I remember. And then it, it clicked. I yeah. was in Chicago. I remember the place I went to. I don't really remember the name. Starbucks? Yeah, no. <laughs> um, and so uh, I knew from that point on, I'm like, gosh, man, this is good coffee. So, And that was the first time I had tasted, like, non-burnt coffee. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, this is really good. Because I had my fair share of, like, sugary drinks. Like, right. It was just fun to get coffee, especially with Tram. And she's like, let's go get a pumpkin spice latte. And, you know, I was all for that stuff. But but, but at that point is kind of when I, I figured that there was something into it. But it was never... I didn't forward think saying, oh, I'm just going to do a coffee shop and yeah, do that. But. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about the coffee business a little bit. I mean, you know, you obviously open up these little, when I say little, I mean, in comparison to larger restaurants, they're, they're smaller footprints and people come in, they buy their cup of coffee. There's obviously margins on that, but you can only do so much volume per so much time. So was there ever a business plan to open up? What, what are you at, 15 now? How many? We're at 12. At 12? Okay. Yeah. And, and, and then also create, uh, you know, a warehouse for cold brew and like all this other stuff. Or did just all this stuff kind of build upon, building upon? Build upon, building upon, all grassroots. Yeah. Uh, I still have the business plan. Happy to share it with you if you ever want to see it sometime. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. Uh, it was not originally Press. Uh, it was originally Perk Java House. That's right. And um, I, I reflected back on that business plan for the first year and a half or two, and then the new opportunities arose. And from that point on, it was just what was okay to go with, what was risk, what was I uncomfortable with? And then the opportunity with the airport came upon me and roasting coffee. I mean, there was just so many different stepping stones. And there was a lot of luck yeah. and a lot of good timing with what we did with press. And I tell any any business owner, you can work as hard as you want, but you need a little bit of luck and you need some good timing. Yeah. Because, you know, those things have to come into play when you're making decisions and you hope that impact that your business has on a consumer is going to be it being an eventful one. For, for sure. And and where did the name Press originally come from? So one night my wife was like, I just don't like Perk. And I'm like, either do I. And she goes, I've got an idea. I'm like, what? And she goes, well, we're going to have French press. We're going to have wine, so wine press. We're going to have a bunch of panini sandwiches, so a panini press. And she goes, I'm in the press. Mm. I'm like, so you think of press? And she goes, yeah, let's do press coffee, food, and wine. Because right. our first location offered all three. Yeah. And uh, in fact, recently, you know, we had beer and wine at, at our at our 32nd street location right um obviously pulled it away but yeah i mean that was uh that was the original plan yeah that's yeah. that's so awesome that, it's such a great name too it's like press going to press yes yeah um with with <clears throat> coffee and um let's just say the the certain taste and the um and the elements of it is there is there a society or a group that you um i don't know associate with that really get into the like all the textures and the because i i reason why i ask this is like like i go and i'm like she's like which one would you like early edition or the bohemian rhapsody and i'm just like <laughs> well uh chocolate tart pink i'm like i don't like I, I don't want something that tastes like that and i'm just kind of like i just pick and i just drink is it black and does it taste good but that that's me and i'm sure that's a majority sure. of a lot of people that just like coffee that doesn't make them sick like the brand i had mentioned before so like what what do you see out there as far as the difference of people and what they enjoy so going all the way back to 2008 one of the things that i wanted to be able to introduce to people was specialty coffee and for those of you listening specialty coffee is is arabica coffee but it's coffee that's scored at 80 points or higher okay there's plenty of arabica coffee below that you've heard the the slang the the words from from mcdonald's and dunkin donuts we serve 100 percent arabica coffee well that's fine you know <laughs> doesn't mean it's going to be good doesn't mean it's going to taste good but the coffee we source is absolutely exceptional yeah and so when you get that coffee and you bring it in we always say that it can only get worse from the time it leaves the farm to us and we do our due diligence to roast that coffee a specific way to bring out those nuances and, and those taste profiles that we believe are, are coming out of that coffee and the longer you drink coffee just like wine you start to develop a palate and you start to understand some of those attributes that are in those coffees and yes of course you don't want it to be burnt and you want it to be smooth and have a good mouth feel and so on and, and for the most part we offer that across the board but we also want to offer a whole lineup of coffees that have different tasty notes that you start to say oh my gosh you're right i do taste that in that coffee because i learned a lot of that when i used to go to wine tastings in napa mm -hmm. and we'd sit up and we'd belly up and we'd try wines and we're like, all right, what are we going to do here? And then the, the, the guy tasting was, he goes, oh, well, you could taste a little bit of this blueberry or this curant, maybe a little bit of grassy notes. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. I do taste that. It's <laughs> that's so amazing. So that's why coffee companies put tasty notes on there, because they want you to try and, and, and work that element into your head. Yeah. I wouldn't say there's 
there's a group of people that I think are like dire to specialty coffee. I right. would say back in 2008 to 2012, there was very much the purest. Okay. And there's places you can go into and be like, oh no, we only do it this way and you're not getting any of this, you're not getting that. For me, I always, I wanted to do the pyramid. And I wanted to be able to offer coffee to everybody. Yeah. And I was never going to do a ton of sugar drinks. And even in the beginning, I did do like fraps and things like that because mm. I thought, wow, I wanted to be able to tailor that. So the, the bottom of the, the pyramid was everybody. Yeah. And then as you moved up, it was the person who was like, oh, I'm getting into specialty coffee or I'm getting into coffee. I want to drink it. I just want to drink it black. I'm like, cool. And then you get the purest. And we had that offering as well. And so I've always kept that model. Now, we still don't we, we don't offer fraps. We haven't done that for a long time. There's loud blenders in the, in the yeah, shop when we yeah. get rid of those. But <laughs> very limited amount of sugar that goes into it. And, and I always tell people, drink the coffee the way you want to. Mm -hmm. But if it's your first time here, have a couple sips without anything in it just so you know what it tastes like. Yeah. And then if you need to add something to it, do it. I'm yeah. not here to tell you how to do things. And it's uh, that's why when somebody tells you this is the wine you have to have with this meal, I'm like, no, I don't. I can have no. whatever wine I want. You know, it's just, yeah. it, I think it's a myth on what people say. Now, maybe it does pair better with it. I don't know. But sometimes, like, I'm going to have a red with fish, and that's just the way it's going to be because that's what I want that day. Same with coffee. A hundred percent. And and the thing is, is like, I, well, I, I want to talk. So as I think about this and I think about how you guys are roasting and doing all that and, and your your roasting facility is a mile from my house, which is nice. And you can, you know, people can go in there. They can actually go up on a, um, <clears throat> you know, on a second story and look down and see them working and doing all this sort of stuff. And it just, it smells amazing. Today, after I got my cup, I walk out and it's like snowing on me. I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> they must be roasting now. But, um, you know, I, I noticed that a lot of people People buy your coffee to go, mm -hmm. like in the bags and your branding and everything that you've done. How did how did all that come to fruition? Do you have a marketing person, or did you come up with all that? Or well, in the beginning, I came up with it. Yeah, and then some of the designs and labels. You know, we had people in the organization that kind of were creative for that matter, because I'm not. All right. And even my niece. You know, she was the, one of the creative pieces on on what it is. But now I have to give. The credit where credit's due, which is Jason. Yeah. Jason is all about the brand. That's cool. And I love it. You know, it's like what you see on that cup, that was one of the greatest sayings that ever came out. And it was perfect timing because this is when the whole political mess was going on. And and he goes, man, we should just do a shirt that says no, no, no such thing as bad press. I'm like, oh, my God. And that is so perfect. It is. And so now it's on our cups. It's on our bags. Um, it's, it's very much... A part of our brand. And, and, you know, he just loves things very clean and tight. Yeah. And... and and we're all behind it, which it's is perfect. really, really nice. It's so, perfect. Yeah, I, I got to give him all the credit on that. You know, Alex and I just said back and be like, yep, that works. Let's do it. What, what is the, I mean, that being said, what, what does the Arizona scene mean to you and, and you know, press personally? Oh, gosh. I mean, it, we're part of this scene. Yeah. You know, we, this started here. I became friends with so many different culinary experts in town, a lot of chefs. Um, even before I started, you know, my wife had a show um, called The Valley Dish. Mm -hmm. And I just started to become friends with chefs. And, and so they were very much a part of helping me getting my business started. Yeah. And I think what's really valuable about Arizona, and, and you may have heard this in the past, but I feel like we're the smallest, biggest town out there. Hundred, Yeah, yeah. For and sure. I have made so many friendships from restaurants to hotels to breweries, and I've leaned on these people. Mm -hmm. I've asked them questions, you know, how did you do this or where did you get this? And so I love that we're a part of this, this, this community this culinary community, and I think we have exploded over the past 10 years. You know, y y you have, and you have so many avenues. You have your retail, you, you know, you have people that come into the stores and buy coffee and hang out, and you've created places of community which are clean and relaxing and have air conditioning um, <laughs> and 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 Wi-Fi. So you, you have all that, but you've also opened up a cold brew plant. Yes. So, I, you what was it? Two summers ago? A summer ago? Oh uh, yeah, three summers ago. Oh, uh, wow! It's Time is off. flying. Yeah. You were literally in there by yourself working the machine. Yeah. Like sweating pounds of what? What was that experience? Oh, oh man, there's there's <laughs> such a backstory to that too. I think we we had guys walk out on us and. I knew Jason wasn't going to be able to do it. <laughs> and Alex, of course, is operations, and he's got to oversee everything else. And, and really, Cold Brew's been 
something I've been passionate about from day one, even though I don't drink it really. Right. I just I just knew in 2012 that like, oh my god, this is gonna be a big hit. Yeah. This could be a big thing, and then like. I put it on tap. I was the first person to put it on tap at Scott's Oak Quarter. People walking like, what is that? You get beer? I'm like, no, it's cold brew. Have you ever tried it before? I'm like, <laughs> no. And, I'll, it, and it just grew and it grew and it grew. And I've got a great picture of the evolution of where we come from. It's awesome. And so, yeah, we built a plant out that uh, supports press coffee. And it is exceptional. Yeah. Um, and I like to think that I'm a bit of the brainchild behind that. I had another guy that was working with me that was very helpful. Yeah. And um, I... I I don't think there's anything like it in town. And I know there's really nothing like it in the Southwest. And it does a really, really good job. And we've got a lot of great certifications behind it, things that, that most people will never get. And the product just comes out consistently good. Yeah. I, uh, I'm very proud of that piece. You very should proud. be. It's very impressive. I've been there a couple of times and, of course, watching you work your ass off. Um, tell me your, your latest and your greatest victory for press. Latest and greatest victory is, in fact, it's funny you brought that up today. Um, we closed a deal with Albertsons. Wow. And I just delivered five pallets of Press Coffee retail bags to a distribution center, and we will be in 92 stores, um, hopefully in the next two to three weeks. That's amazing. So that's a, uh, that's a massive victory for me. Uh, now I get to share my whole bean coffee with people in, in 92 different Albertsons wow. across five different states. And um, I feel like that's, that's a major victory. I couldn't even fathom yeah. something like that five yeah. or six years ago. It's just, it, it is, it is ex so exciting to say the least. And, and what was the victory prior to that that's similar? Oh, well, there's this small little company <laughs> called Sprouts. Um, we had an opportunity um, to work hand in hand with Sprouts. And we were already had our coffee in their shelves here locally. Yeah. And uh, they approached us about potentially doing a retail store inside of a Sprouts. And we did that at 7th Avenue in Osborne. Mm -hmm. And um, that was definitely, that moved me. It definitely moved me because people always come in like, what's it feel like to open a new store? And I, I said, you know, the first four or five were really, really touching. Right. Um, a lot of work, a lot of hard work. And, and then when you get past that, it starts to feel a little bit the same. It's like a guy winning the Super Bowl every year. It's like at some point, like it doesn't feel the yeah, same. Yeah, you feel like Tom Brady does. of coffee, right. Yeah, but, you know, pulling into Sprouts and seeing my sign up there, uh, and walking into that store and seeing it there, I mean, it was it was something special. That's you awesome, know, man. Sharing that with my wife and watching her shed tears. Yeah, it's, that's really. It cool. really is, man. I mean, it, it touches my heart to see where this company's gone, and yeah, I feel quite lucky. You know, and 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 for the record about your wife. The sweetest, most genuine, amazing woman. I mean, she's just the best. Whenever I walk in there, like, we will literally have a conversation longer than I thought I could ever have with her, you know? Yeah. Just because you just talk about everything, you know? And she's so open. It's, and it's and really that's cool. who she is. A lot yeah. of people think that, you know, TV personalities are going to be different. Right. She's no different in person. No. Nah. You know, she just really is a special person, and she's an amazing She's an amazing mom. Yeah. I always said wife for the longest time, but I say amazing mom and wife now. So very, very lucky to have her. No, you... you we all are. That's really cool. Um, talk about the, the charities that are close to Press's heart. Oh, we've, we've had f quite a few. Yeah. Um, the big one for us is Phoenix Children's Hospital. Okay. And every year, um, over the past five years, four years, we've done, you know, a day of giving, which is a big day. It's awesome. All of our profits go in. We get matching partners, and, yep. and we provide a big check to that specific organization. Uh, we did it with Stark. We did it with Phoenix Children's Hospital a couple of times. Um, and then quarterly, we'll do a bag that's dedicated to a small charity. Mm. And uh, it doesn't generate a lot of money, but it generates awareness for yeah, people. Yeah, and, sure. and, and for that small charity, I think it's really important. Um, and then this year, again, we'll go back to Phoenix Children's Hospital. It had both of my kids have been in that hospital nothing for nothing major yeah but what they do there is really exceptional right I mean, it's something that you don't ever want to tell somebody like man you should go try it out like yeah. it's obviously not but i will tell people if they do and they had to bring their children there they, they are going to be in amazing hands and uh, the people that work there are very much on board with what we do i love it i love it it's so cool that how press does give back and i know i i you had asked me to be a part of that and it was like such a proud moment they yeah. came and brought the check here and yeah it was, it was really cool um 
So you're obviously a human being. You do more than work. What are what is it? What are your non-negotiables every day that you need to do in order for you to be the best person with inside yourself? You know what I'm saying? To be better for your family, employees, partners, that sort of thing. I think that um, I've learned a lot from both of my partners and the type of work habits they have. So I think that I've carried that into my life, even at a later age. Um, I've got friends like you that I look at and say, gosh, I want to be I want to be a better person because of how they do things. Um, that I think there is still a big piece of my life that I want to improve. Yeah. Uh, and one of these days, it's just going to click and I'm going to hit it. But every day I wake up with a positive mind. That yeah. is number one absolute. Good morning. How are you? Make sure my kids are happy. My kids want to hug me. Uh, I see my employees. I'm very friendly. I mean, there's a rare time that, that I'm an unhappy person. You're you know? hardly ever grumpy. I yeah, I just I think that's such a valuable asset in somebody's life because th- th- it expuses who you are, and yeah. it, it, it's kind of addicting. And so that's where a lot of the culture came from with press is you've got to treat your people right. You've got to treat your customers right. And it's not to be fake. It's just to be genuine. Yeah. You know, and how are you? And, and You've seen it a million times when you've walked into the store. I'll, I'll peek around the corner because I see you, and yeah. it's just a big smile on That's both of it. our faces. And, right. and that, to me, is, is one of the healthiest things you could have is, is just plain happiness. It's contagious. It is, and and, and I, I, I just won't ever change that part of my life. I don't ever want to not be happy. Yeah. And um, whether I'm, I'm in some crazy workout phase of my life, I will not ever be unhappy. Yeah. I just want to be, I, I just, I'm blessed. I get to be, I get to be healthy. I get to, I get to hear stories of people who haven't had good health. And like, I, I take for granted sometimes who I am, mm-hmm. what I have, but I, I'm, I'm lucky to be where I'm at. Well, knowing you as well as I do, I mean, you know, I know, I know you like to mountain bike. I know you like to golf. I know you like to barbecue. <laughs> I, I know you like to go to food festivals and walk around and talk to everybody. Yes. You know, are there any other hobbies that? Well, um, we're big into camping. Camping, yeah. Camping's one of the big ones. Uh, we started with tent camping, and then we got a travel trailer. Now we've got a big Class C, and um, that's one of our. What's one of the things that we absolutely love doing? Like yeah. When I, I can put the family together in this thing, and we can go somewhere and spend three days. Um, Doing that is, is, I just love it. Yeah. It's just calming. It's peaceful. I always hope that we go somewhere where there's no phone service, but rarely does that happen anymore. And um, and then I got this other little toy called a side-by-side, and so I get to drive that around too. So that's pretty fun. But I love all the things that the outdoors offer. Yeah. I mean, if it were up to me and, and somebody said, oh, here's $100 million, I'd go buy a ranch. Yeah. I would go buy a ranch. Just be out there. I'd have a lake, and, and that's where I would be. I, you know, I b- miss being around people, but the solace of having that land and living off the land would just be something I would absolutely love. There's something very spiritual and, and metaphysical about camping and yes. being out, like you said, on a ranch. That's why we bought our place up in Show, though, is to be able to just enjoy the sunsets and yes. just escape all that. Um, all right. Well, cool. Before we wrap up, what um, what can you tell people about, you know, presses like, I don't know, future goals or things that you have like on the horizon? Um, I think we're going to we are continuing this relationship with Sprouts. There'll be more Sprouts locations that are coming in the future. Okay. Um, I'll continue to work hard and with business to business. Uh, yeah. That's the piece I've always loved. Uh, it's something you and I have a lot in common. Uh, we love to visit our customers. We love to talk to people. We love the food industry. And it, if there's anybody out there that wants press coffee, come see me. You yeah. Know, I'm not a selling guy. I'm here to sell a brand that we think we have a lot of pride in. Right. Um, and we sell it at... at, at is any places we need to. So that that's where I think press is at. And, and, and I love where we're at currently. And I love the team that's in place and my partners and the whole nine yards. So that's good, man. It's a good place to be, especially yeah, at what, 39 years old. You've, uh, you've really, you've really crushed <laughs> it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> um, all right. A, a few rapid fire questions before we leave. There's there no, we go. no wrong answers. Okay. You've listened to one of my podcasts before, right? Yes. Camping or beach hotel? Camping. Okay. Uh, dark or light roast? Light. Okay. Barbecue or a steakhouse? Man, that's 50 50. Uh, I have to pick one. Uh, All right. You don't have to. I mean, I, I still might lean towards a steakhouse. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite steakhouse? You had to pick one. Uh, in town? Yeah. Uh, either Dominic's Steak 44 or Ocean 44. Yeah. I know what I'm getting. Yeah, you know exactly what you're getting. Uh, Jimmy Buffett or the Eagles? Jimmy Buffett. Okay. Um, an AZ summer or Chicago winter? AZ summer. 
<laughs> you did pause. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Megalodon or the Loch Ness Monster? <laughs> Loch Ness Monster. Okay. Uh, NWA or Run DNC? Ooh. <laughs> MWA. And you know what's funny? I was thinking about this today. Both of those bands or rap artists, you know, all, all the members, they're getting old. Like, oh, oh I know. Is it and crazy? they did a special on HBO, yeah. and I'm like listening to the songs from NWA. I'm like, oh, man, I love that song. And then I'll go into Spotify and I'll yeah. pull them up and listen Same. to them. I'm like, God, I love this music. The you know? saddest thing about NWA is that they weren't around long enough to no. make more NWA. It's no. like, come on. Not at all. Um, gas or electric? Gas. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I thought you I have both. Be. Yeah, both. Yeah. 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 You, uh, you're a good cook. I, I know when you used to post on Instagram some of your, your cooking ex explanades, you would. Uh, and I'll be honest, I, I didn't know if you were tailoring that towards like cars, but if you're talking about cooking, it's cooking. gas all day. Yeah, no, it's not even a cooking. question. Yeah, it's gas all day. Yeah, no, I, I, cars. Yeah. Who cares about even those when things? I, when, even when I'm camping, I, I have a little range in the camper. I'll never use it unless it's like brittly cold or raining outside like, oh my gosh I, i've got a camp chef outside that yeah I use. propane yeah. and all that yep. no that's cool all right well where can um i mean obviously people can find i'll put it all in show notes people know if you live out here you've been to press you know about press um is there anything else you want people to know or, or go to or donate to or anything like that oh no i i think just being a customer is amazing to me yeah. Um, and, and don't hesitate to ask questions when you come into our stores. Don't hesitate to ask about the coffee. Yeah. Uh, visit our store at 32nd and Shea. That is our flagship store. Uh, D'Lo's been there a thousand times. He's who, been there who maybe 2,000 times. Who told you about that times. location? I don't know. I'm not even going to bring up huh, that guy's name. That's weird. But yeah. um, at that, uh, that is a dream come true, that location for me. And awesome. we share everything we do there, which is great. Yeah. I'm there pretty much every morning. So, all right, brother. Awesome to have you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me, I told me, you we'd keep Appreciate this within your, your, your time zone. Um, but yeah, everybody, thank you for listening. Really appreciate it. Uh, I love doing the podcast, love talking with my friends and, and love having people learn about their stories in hospitality. Uh, just note that the podcast is sponsored by myself, uh, the DLO and Bar Restaurant Insurance and today by uh, Press Coffee, even though I paid for this. But um, <laughs> <laughs> all is good. Thank you. Give us a five star. Go to Press Coffee, get some coffee. And, uh, you know, thanks again. Until next time. Peace out. Peace out.